Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. I've got a jam-packed show for you here today. There's a lot of stuff going on. Let's jump into this one. First off, we've got a clip here with these liberal boneheads. This is just so sad. They they, they dug up anyone they could find that's still supporting the liberals on uh, mainstream media here. It, the, you know, the liberal members of the committee put up a big fuss about why are you inviting these conservative premiers to come and appear before us? I actually think it probably did the liberals more good than harm by a country mile because what you saw on display there with each of them was uh, just an absolute parade of nonsense. You saw how completely dishonest they were about the costs of the, of the carbon, carbon tax <laughs> and whether basically just again, once again, ignoring the rebates that are available that for 80% of households as the parliamentary budget officer has found, found makes them more than whole. But also, when they were asked for their alternatives, it was yeah. just fantasy. It was, it was well, maybe we could, we could amend the Paris Accord. Uh, or maybe we could get China to reduce its consumption of coal. Or maybe we could get other countries to accept our, uh, to, 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 to give us the credit for the carbon reduction they made by using our liquid natural gas rather than claiming the credit themselves. Well, you know, why would they do that exactly? <laughs> Uh, was not answered. Or my favorite, you know, the topping at all was, was Scott Moe the day before, who was at, when he was asked alternatives, said, well, we looked at all the alter alternatives and they all cost more than the carbon price. Yeah. Gosh, oh, well. I wonder what we should conclude from that. This is such a low IQ panel of people here and they're all on TV. It's just sick. <laughs> like, seriously, guys, get a brain. Let's jump into the comments here. They're fighting for their jobs and professional survival. If Trudeau doesn't get reelected, then they'd no longer be TV pundits and their employment opportunities would be limited to the warm and embracing <laughs> bosom of Canadian academia where ideology is the key qualification. <laughs> <laughs> Canada's version of the view. That's, that's basically it here. So moving on, we've got this uh, post here on X. Uh, Every Canadian between age 25 and 35 I'm meeting nowadays, I suggest them to explore youth mobility scheme and explore places outside of Canada. Canada isn't the place to start your life. That's just it. Canada is not the place for people to start their lives now. Um, here's a list. So for anyone wanting to escape, here's a country maybe of your choice. Looking through them, I mean, some of these are not the easiest to get into, like New Zealand. I don't know if you really want to go to Hong Kong. They already lost their freedom. So it's just communist China now. But it's a cool city. The air quality is terrible. I've been there three times. I've noticed a bunch of woke left people on uh, X posting this as the, <laughs> the big smoking gun of climate change. Is this one video? It's so stupid. It's like, yeah, this it's flood water. It happens every year. Yeah, so that apparently is the big smoking gun that uh, we have to keep paying carbon tax. I don't know. Those culverts are expensive. Uh, hopefully they fish those out. But yeah, I mean, it happens everywhere. There's always there's always roads being washed out. It's just erosion. That's what water does. Every year this happens in every country that it rains. Next up here, we've got a lot of uh, protests going on in uh, Toronto. There's just the Palestine protesters are everywhere. And for whatever reason, today is the fight with police day. I don't know. You'll see here, clip after clip, they're fighting with cops. Come down, come down. Don't be tough on people. Nobody touch you. There's no warning! I didn't do anything! 
So this craziness goes on and on and on. I gotta say the new beats that they're coming up with, they're pretty catchy. They they get your head moving. Um yeah, I don't know why they're fighting with the cops. I don't it's just yeah, you'll see here it just goes back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of chaos going on there. Let's jump into the next one. So you got the horses out here today. Those are some well-trained horses. I would not get anywhere near one of those. This is wild. I don't know what the, the goal is here. I don't understand how there's so much protesting. Like I work all day, every day, as soon as I wake up to when I go to bed. I take a couple hours for myself in the gym. I don't understand how all these people are out here all day, every day. They don't have jobs. Do they have jobs? I don't know. Are they working through the night? How do these people fund the lives of protesting all the time? That's what I want to know. Yeah, so it's just clip after clip. More horses. So I'm, I'm just realizing here it's probably it's, it's a holiday, right? That's why I guess people are out. But even still, those protests go on and on all the time. So it's not, it can't just be that there's a holiday today or yesterday. Well, I don't know. I haven't taken a holiday in seven years, but Easter holiday or whatever it is, they're still out there four or five days a week. So I don't understand. Are these people like all super wealthy and then they can just, their full-time job is protesting? I don't know. I'm honestly confused. <laughs> Hey, we're just talking. You're Move not talking. We're just they don't talking. want to talk to you. You weren't trying to engage. Yeah, in an aggressive conversation. No, we videotaped. Yeah, it was videotaped. It's time to call you. I need you to get paid. Hey, when you talk about the end of the protest, we're talking, buddy. We're talking. Let's go, brother. All the Zionists are racist. All the Zionists are e-terrorists. Yeah, more more chaos in the streets here. Personally, I'd just say if, if there's any of the Palestine protesters watching, just follow Trudeau around. I love it when you guys just follow him around and just make his life miserable. Uh, when I see it in the streets, it's just kind of like, you know, people are already pushed to the brink. They don't want to have to deal with this too when they're coming to and from work and stuff. That, that's all I have to say. We got a clip here from Cat Canada. Uh, liberal MPs are big cowards who can't defend their positions. Let's check this out. Liberal MP Orion Turnbull flags and pronouns in bio tweeted out this. <laughs> it's basically a climate alarmist post um, attacking the leader of the opposition, Pierre Polyev. So I quote tweeted that with this because Ryan had turned off the replies. And I said, Ryan is so confident in what he says that he has to turn off the replies to his post. Hey, Ryan, we don't need a plan because the climate crisis is a hoax. And why doesn't China believe in the climate crisis? Oh, yeah, because they're already a communist country. <laughs> and just like 30 seconds later, the brave and stunning liberal MP blocked me. For just one quote tweet. Should Canadian politicians be allowed to block Canadian citizens like this? Let me know. Now that should 100% be illegal. Politicians should not be able to block a citizen. 
period. That's ridiculous. I mean, I'd expect that from the liberals. They're all just really weak, small people. So they, they can dish it. They can't take it. And speaking of weak people, we've got Justin Trudeau. Remember this clip? That's not very polite. Justin Trudeau told us right from the beginning who he was from adoring the basic dictatorship of China to having people removed and forced from town hall events. I think your voice is more important than her ability to listen. That's not very polite. Need to you don't respect anyone in this room? Then I'm gonna have to ask you to leave this room. If you don't respect the people in this room, please leave this room. Thank you. Good. Come on, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Okay, this is it. Will you please respect the people in this room? Will you please respect the people in this room? Will you please respect the people in this room? No, then please leave. If you're not going to respect the people in this room, you need to leave. That's the rule. Sorry. Go ahead. Yes, we're asking the police to remove you both. She really pissed him off. Sorry. No, it's, it's time to go. Please remove her. <laughs> Winston Churchill pointed out that democracy is messy and it is messy but it's the best possible form of engagement because we do get to hear from everyone in this thank you and I, I apologize for uh, uh, for the behavior of our fellow citizens <laughs> really Trudeau I'm surprised he didn't quote something from Mao <laughs> or Stalin one of his heroes some news coming from America. So Biden has made Easter Sunday as the uh, transgender day of visibility, which has pissed off a lot of religious people being a religious holiday traditionally. Only Biden, only sleepy woke Joe can uh, <laughs> further <laughs> hurt his election uh, chances here. I don't know what is going on in America. I don't know why he's the top candidate to run. The guy can barely keep his eyes open. He doesn't know which which decade he's in. Yet, you, you leave this guy in power and he does stupid stuff like this. We got another clip here. Uh, this guy here, <laughs> the, the co-founder of the Weather Channel, debunking climate change and calling it a hoax. <laughs> Hello to all your viewers. I resent you calling me a denier. That is a, a word meant to put me down. I'm a skeptic about climate change. And I want to make it darn clear, Mr. Kenny's not a scientist. I am. He's the CEO of the Weather Channel now. I was the founder of the Weather Channel, not the co-founder. And I'm glad you did, because I am addicted to the Weather Channel. I watch a lot I'm of cable news. Now. Hold on just well. a minute. I'm not done. <laughs> and CNN has taken a very strong position on global warming that is that it is a consensus. Well, there is no consensus in science. Science isn't a vote. Science is about facts. And if you get down to the hard, cold facts, uh, there's no question about it. Climate change is not happening. There is no significant man-made global warming now. There hasn't been any in the past, and there's no reason to expect any in the future. There's a whole lot of baloney. And uh, yes, it is. it has become a big political point of the Democratic Party and part of their platform. And I regret it's become political instead of scientific, but the science is on my side. I don't think we're going to come to a conclusion about the topic right here. What I do wonder, oh, I know though, is when not, you because see... because you wouldn't allow it to happen on CNN. But I'm happy <laughs> well, that we, I got on the air and got a chance to talk to your, uh, to your viewers. Hello, everybody. What there I is do, no global warming. What I do wonder <laughs> is when you see the government, when you see NASA, when you see other institutions say that 97% of climate scientists agree do you think they're making it up? I, I, what I don't understand is how you well, square that. Well, that's a manipulated that. figure, and let me explain it to you. Uh, this, the uh, government puts out about two and a half billion dollars directly for climate research every year. It only gives that money to scientists who will produce scientific results that support the global warming hypothesis of the Democrat Party of position. So they don't have any choice. If you're going to get the money, you've got to support their position. Therefore, 97 percent of the scientific reports published support global warming. Why? Because those are the ones the government pays for, and that's where the money is. It's real simple. But that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't make it true. That only makes it bought and paid for. The money goes in circles. That is a funny guy. He's a... <laughs> 
Surprised they let him on the air, actually. Next up, we got a clip here from uh, John Barlow, a uh, conservative who's in his, uh, his riding here, talking with a chicken farmer and talking about the carbon tax. Carbon Tax Tuesday. I'm here at Mountain View Poultry in my riding uh, with Ty and John Keelstra. Uh, they are uh, a great uh, operation here in Foothills. They've got almost 400,000 birds uh, here at the poultry operation. And you guys are having to pay the carbon tax every single day because you have no alternative uh, to ensure that you keep those birds warm. But what has been the impact on, on your business and uh, not only on your business here, but on the food supply? It's been tremendously hard because we haven't seen our final bills because the cold snap is just was within the last few weeks, but we will see them. But but it's it's huge. And 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 what I what, what I take from this is is we are we're attacking our food supply. We we as farmers we we already work on a on a, on a small margin, you know, three four percent at the most, and and it's just volume. That's where that's where the the numbers come from. And uh, we all need food. That's that's the most important thing. I mean, you go without a meal for a day and tell me what's important to you. I mean, if 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 if, if the cost of our, our shoes are more expensive or a new jacket, well, we can defer that for a few weeks. But when it comes to food, you can't. And we have to pass it to the consumer. And the consumer already is, is struggling to pay for it. Chicken farmer, you know, passing the cost along. And he says uh, says here $180,000 is what he pays in carbon taxes. That's crazy. That's a lot of money that could have gone to building another barn or whatever. Next up, we've got an interview here with Danielle Smith. And she just absolutely destroys this guy, David Cochran. This is the most woke of the woke CBC brown nosers out there. He, <laughs> This guy is the worst. Uh, on a straight cash in cash out analysis, roughly 80% of Canadians get back more than they pay in the carbon tax and the net benefits for low income Canadians. You can see here he's reading his Trudeau notes, just. <laughs> is even higher still. It's significant there. And that's especially true in Alberta. That's about a 3% boost in household income for low income Albertans. So how is that not helping with the affordability crisis? Because if you get rid of the carbon tax, you get rid of the carbon rebate. <laughs> well, it's gotta be one or the other. I mean, is the tax there to cause people to make the investments that I talked about, which are multi thousand dollar investments, or is it there as some kind of income redistribution scheme? And um, if you're going to argue it's an income redistribution stream, then I guess I would have to argue that it doesn't go back to small businesses. The, the small businesses are going, they don't get the rebate. They just pay the tax and then they have to work that into the price of all the goods that they have and it gets passed on to customers. That's why the economic impact matters as well is because you, you get a portion of it rebated to you, but then the price of everything you pay for ends up going up, which increases inflation. And when inflation goes up, then the Bank of Canada says, sorry, we can't cut your rates. And when your rates don't get cut, then when you go to renew your mortgage, that's also more expensive. So I think that they're, they're creating a, a, a greater inflation crisis. It'd be so much easier if they just said, hey, look, we recognize uh, oil prices are going higher again. This is a big cost. We'll take that entire 17 cents a liter off while oil prices are high because we know it's going to have an impact on you. That's what we did in Alberta. We gave $2.3 billion of relief over two years to do exactly that. And if the federal government wants to follow our model, that's what we do. When the rates are low, we end up uh, having the tax back on. When the rates are high, we take them off so that we can give a, a bit of a break to people. And it works. Last year, we had the, the lowest level of inflation in the country. This year, with Scott Moe not adding, not collecting the carbon tax, he's got the lowest inflation rate but, in the country. But the Bank of Canada, example. Premier, the Bank of Canada never cites carbon pricing as a reason for raising or holding rates. It's always international factors. It's always supply chain issues. It's all, all, it, it is increasingly provincial governments putting a lot of money into the pockets of their citizens and, and driving buying power. It's not carbon pricing. And Tiff Macklem has said that the direct effect of it is like 0.15%. The knock-on effect is 0.5%. 0.3%. We're talking 15 to 30 cents on 100 bucks. This is not the reason inflation and interest rates are high. It's a bunch of other factors, right? So is, well, isn't carbon pricing being kind of scapegoating here is the reason behind the inflation and affordability crisis when it's not the driving issue? David Cochran, buddy, you got you got something on your nose there. Is that is that Trudeau's? You got something brown on your nose there, buddy. All I know is last January when we had rebates for electricity, when we had uh, rebates on fuel taxes, when we had our other affordability measures, we had the lowest inflation in the country. This year with Scott Moe taking the, the fuel tax off of natural gas, he's got the lowest inflation rate in the country. So something else is going on there. Maybe maybe the modeling is not is not uh, take, taking into account all factors. I think it just stands to reason that when you have higher cost of energy 
and energy goes into heating warehouses and transporting food and all of those additional costs for gasoline uh, and uh, and diesel and heating, it's going to increase the cost of goods. It's just I think it's I think it's fairly obvious to most people that the cost <laughs> of living goes up when those kinds of costs go up. OK, well, I, 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 I may be, but that's not what the Bank of Canada is saying. And that's not what a lot of the economic modeling is saying, at least the role the carbon price is, is playing in this. But just as a final point, Premier, I mean, if you get what you want, I, I know in April 1, your gas tax is going back up because of a drop in oil prices. You need that revenue to, to help with your budget. That's going to stack on top of the carbon tax increase. If you get what you want and this goes away at the federal level, and if you get what you want and, and the emissions cap goes away, then everyone's kind of counting on industry to do this without Mm -hmm. sort of federal pressure and a price signal that compels them or creates incentive for them to act in a way or face financial penalty. Doesn't that just amount to Canada lowering its ambition when it comes to emissions reduction? Uh, because the consensus among economists is that pricing is the best way to do it and everything else, technology regulation, is more expensive, more intrusive, and, and not as effective as creating incentive for big polluters to change. Sky. Well, I'll, I'll take a difference of, of, of approach with the retail carbon tax, which I don't feel consumers can avoid, and it just becomes an extra cost for them, versus industrial pricing, which we have done since 2007. <clears throat> and in fact, our tier program, it's our, our technology innovation and emissions reduction approach, we put a price on industrial carbon, those individual, those companies that are performing better than average get a credit, which they can sell on the market. Those that are performing worse than average have to pay into a fund. We've We've had them pay over $2 billion into that fund that go into emissions reduction technologies. And our program has been affirmed by the federal government to be uh, equivalent to the approach that they wanted to take until 2030. So we're gonna continue with that approach because we see that it's working, but we need it to be at the provincial level. We certainly don't wanna see the federal government take it over and that's why we're gonna continue to fight against it. But industrial pricing is a different, it's a different ball game because those are the companies that do have the billions of dollars to invest in the technological change. But we shouldn't be hurting seniors, those on fixed income, those who are vulnerable by having the, 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 the price of everything they pay for continue to go up with these carbon taxes that they simply can't avoid. Premier Daniel Smith, thanks again for your time today. You bet, thank you. It's unbelievable, her patience with this schmuck. <laughs> there's been multiple people say I should run for some sort of government position office or whatever. I was like, there's no way. I would just call, immediately, if I was on the, in that situation, call this guy a, a shill, a schmuck, an absolute loser, because that's what he is. I mean, <laughs> look at this. It's just, like, what world does this guy think passing on costs to can Canadians over and over and over through fuel charges is is a good thing and, and that somehow those numbers he's quoting 0 0.1 percent 15 cents of 100 bucks are you kidding me it's just so dumb so we all need a little bit of hope in the world and we all need some uh some good things in happening in life and here we've got a couple of <laughs> baby polar bear with mama <laughs> isn't that cute that's really cute yeah, it makes it feel a little, a little bit better what's going on in Canada. Also in good news, we've got this story here. There's some photos above I can't show you guys, but basically the older brother here, he saved his little sister being attacked by a dog. He ended up getting 90 stitches protecting her. And he, he said, if someone had to die, I thought it should be me. That is quite something. And the, the I can't show you the photos, but they're like the whole face like this, like this, like this, like da -da 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 the stitches the whole way. It's... It's remarkable. That's that's a good that's a feel good story. We got a, another feel good story here. Also with a dog, a 61 year old man was stuck in the mud for two days, and he was rescued after his dog ran to go get help and started biting someone in the area and led them led police to the owner's location. The chopper right above me here. There's never choppers here. So yeah, this dog led the police. They started biting someone in the area. Led police to the owner's location. Uh, and cried for help. Throughout the two days, the dog provided warmth and even fought off coyotes. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's where we're going to wrap up this one. Let me know down below what you guys are thinking about the Palestine protesters duking it out with the police now. I don't know if they're paying more to these liberal uh, TV hosts, the pundits, to, to kind of stir up stuff some more, trying to paint this picture. It seems to be more and more of these days that they're, they're trying to <laughs> their best to do it. I know the liberals are spending a lot more money on ads and stuff now, trying to do smear campaigns, polyev, all this kind of stuff. It seems more and more they're trying to do stuff and more and more it's just not working. Like David Cochran, come on, man. No one respects you, dude. 
So let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching to the end of the video here. If you go check out my second channel, I got that rolling uh, full steam now. I'm going to update the thumbnails so you guys know exactly which one is which. I'm trying to figure out a color scheme or something that works so you know very clearly if it's a... Uh, a second channel video or this one on the second channel i do walk and talk so i'm walking through the woods nice places and i cover different stories which is different than the uh, show format that i've got here at my desk so be sure to subscribe here and maybe go over to my other channel check it out subscribe over there too we'll keep fighting for freedom until we get it back it's only a matter of time see you on the next one